So, in 1869, Johan and Anna Katharina Brueggemann, Gripschover, Anna Katharina was the Brueggemann, Johan's the Gripschover, they came to America. They left uh, Mars Bacholt, which was in Prussia at the time. There's no such thing as Germany until 1871. 1871 was the unification of Germany. Germany was always becoming, but it was never being. Napoleon made fun of Germany because it was always trying to become something, but it never did until 1861. So we got the fuck out. They was like, wait a second, you're going to actually make this something? Get the fuck out of here. We're gone. We're gone. Because Germany is largely a Protestant country. Prussia began because it was all Lutheran. And the whole thing was Protestantism. The Duke of um, uh, Prussia, the main Duke, the Grand Master of the Teutonic Knights, that would be Albert, and Duke Albert, he was like, you know, the first monarch of Prussia, and then Prussia takes over all the other Germanic countries, except for Austria, they never could conquer Austria, they beat them in the Seven Weeks War, but they didn't occupy them, they didn't take Austria over, instead they took over the other Germanic countries and just formed their, the upper Germany, and Austria got to retain their own country, until, you know, of course, the assassination of, um, Archduke Franz Ferdinand, and then the entire empire dissolved. There still is in Austria today, though. So, Andrew Hellman, it looks like Hessman on her death certificate. This is Elizabeth Hellman. So, I am a third-generation German-American. Third generation. My mother's father was born in the 1905, and then his father was born in Germany. That is how fucking close... Like, I'm basically, I'm a fucking immigrant. I'm basically like, you know, I just got here. We just got here yesterday. And, um, in fact, all of us got here yesterday. If you, you know, factor in the 10,000, 14,000 years that the Native Americans have been here. Uh, but the uh, the generation is three generations. You had Johan and Anna Katharina Brueggemann. They had seven kids, and it was Maria uh, Katharina was the oldest. She eventually marries, and she's not a grip server anymore. And we don't know what the fuck happens to her, because if you don't carry on the man's name, if you don't carry on the grip server name, I can't trace you back. I can't follow who you are or where you went. And so, you know, she married some other man, and then they married, uh, the, the, I don't know. The, eventually the name got deleted really quick. So that's the raccoon family. So there's seven kids. William. Uh, she, she wasn't a grip server, so she drops out, but that's, we're related, we're blood related, right? We all came from Anna, uh, Katharina and Johan, and, uh, Johan, people want to say that's Barney, Barney, Barney Jr., well, it's actually the fourth Barney, if you want to be specific, and, uh, it was, you know, the second Johan, so you might get away with saying Johan Jr., but it's Johan the second, and Johan's the motherfucking pioneer, he's the one that came over. So we're going to be like, oh, you know, oh, Barney, no, no, Johan, let's use his entire fucking full name. He, you know, crossed over on the Deutschland when the passenger, iron passenger steamships, steamships, like it was all sailboats. That was Christopher Columbus came over on a sailboat. So, so what's my point? My point is this. So Ferdinand is the second youngest of those child, uh, that, uh, of that bunch of uh, Johan and Anna Katharina Brueggemann group server. So you got nine of them coming over, Johan and Catherine, and then you have seven group server children, Maria, who is the daughter, and that's fine. There's, you know, the raccoon family, the raccoon group servers, or the raccoon out of Theban or something. I forget what she married into. And then you have William, who didn't have any kids. And so then you have five boys who are all grip servers, and then they had a bunch of kids, and so then that spreads the grip server name in America. And I like to think that a lot of the grip servers that are here are probably from Johan and Katharina. They, most of them probably came from there. Uh, if they didn't, you would have uh, had these O with the two dots on top of the O because that's how the original grip server spelled their name. So you had to anglicize your names, CP. Uh, group server, my grandpa, who died when I was two years old, they called him CP, which stands for Camillus Paul. And why CP? Why is there no umlaut over the O? Because you had to be an Englishman. You could not be a German. We had two world wars against Germany. So fuck your German heritage. Fuck your German culture. Fuck you. You don't get to be who you are. You got to take all the teachings 
of your parents and throw them out. What they taught you, the German language, fuck your German tongue. They taught you German history, fuck your history, fuck your culture, get rid of that shit. So, instead of calling Camillus, Camillus, which is a very German sounding name, and Gripschauvel, Gripschauvel, it's uh, Gripschauvel, and it's Bud, or CP, but not Camillus. No, he isn't going around saying he's Camillus. No fucking way. So, that's that's the male side. Then, um, Camillus's father was Ferdinand. So, you had Johan and Catherine. And Ferdinand was on the boat with Johan and Catherine. He was a kid, maybe, I don't know, six years old or so. And he comes over to America, and he marries Elizabeth Hellman. Elizabeth Hellman's father was Andrew Hellman, who is also from Germany, and Mary Peters who is also from Germany. This is according to her death certificate, and Ferdinand Gripschiver was the informant. Why would he lie? I don't know why he would lie. I don't think he's lying. I think it's Andrew Hellman. That's what the cursive looks like. It could be Hessman. It looks like Hellman. I'm pretty sure it's Hellman. It only says one N, but I think there might be two Ns. But H-E-S-L, I don't think that's an actual S. I think it was just a little low L. They didn't really make the L all dramatic. And uh, and they should have because I mean fuck I, when future generations comes to take a look at this so R H Herndon good fucking you know nice doctor's fucking handwriting you piece of shit so Mary Peters is from Germany so they don't get all precise I've seen Bohemia I've seen Austria I've seen Bavaria so there are some uh, U S Census reports and some death certificates that say precisely where they're from but this just says Germany. So Andrew Hellman's from Germany, Mary Peters are from Germany, so both parents of Elizabeth Hellman were from Germany, but Elizabeth Hellman herself was born in 1862. Now some of my cousins want to say that we fought for the Confederacy uh, in the Civil War. Well, she's the first person to have been born in uh, the United States, the first person to be born in Kentucky, and it was in 1862. Um, Actually, I, there was uh, uh, Mary Bills. Actually, was uh, Margaret Bills was born in uh, 1859, I think, Cincinnati. But that would have been Union, right, Cincinnati? So you're trying to tell me that this uh, two-year-old or this zero-year-old, so the three years old, between the years of zero and three, Elizabeth Hellman was out there fighting. You know, the South is going to rise again for slavery for them 10,000 slave owners. Get the fuck out of here. The majority of Kentuckians, 100,000 Kentuckians, fought for the North, fought for the Union. The majority of Germans fought for the North. They fought for the Union. They took over Iowa and the Midwest and Ohio and Pennsylvania. That's where most of the Germans came. Some of them went to St. Louis. Some went to Louisville. Some went to Cincinnati. But essentially, they stayed, you know, on the other side of the Ohio River, and they stayed north. And so Dakotas, Minnesota, that's where your German population is. How many Germans went south? Uh, none. None of the fucking Germans went south. The most south that they went below the Ohio River, Sanford Town, Kenton County, which is in northern Kentucky. And also Sanford Town founded the first fucking uh, school. The first elementary school was in uh, Kenton County. It was from the German town. So we discovered that. The Germans did. And the first fire department was out there. So, we're from Germany. I got German ancestors. That was the point of all that. And so what does that mean? That just means that I have German ancestry. I have uh, German culture and German, you know, there's some influence that just where I came from. And so I think history is important to know so that way we can see how far we've came from how far the struggle has been, where we're at, and for us to continue to progress. That's the whole point of history is to continue to go forward. And that's the point of learning history. So cultural regeneration, that's another important uh, thing, cultural regeneration. So like African Americans who had their culture ripped from them, they were Africans. They had a specific language, specific culture, specific, you know, ways of living and doing life. Then they got kidnapped, and now they're brought over here, Christian, uh, Christianized and forced to speak English, and they were slaves. So they had everything that they knew was ripped away from them, uh, made sure they weren't educated, families were broken up. And then afterwards, 
they had freedom, right, after the Civil War. They had, well, they, they basically got, you know, pushed right back into being a sharecropper, but they, um, they, they, slavery was outlawed after the Civil War, uh, the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment, and then after, uh, essentially, 1964, right, since uh, Martin Luther King and integration, um, black people truly became free. So black people have only been free for about 50 years. But once they got truly free, who are they? Are they the people that the white people told them to be? Are they the Africans that they were to begin with? Or do they have to make it up? And that's what cultural regeneration is. They have to make it up. They can take pieces of who they are now. They can take pieces of who they were then. Or they can reject both of them, create something totally different. They can take pieces of them, both, meld something together, throw some outside influences, and go with that. Cultural regeneration. Regenerate to create again, to make um, I feel like gen regeneration is like if like your arm was ripped off, then your arm is regenerated. So that's what cultural regeneration is, and that's what I have as a current, uh, as a German, as a Prussian, Bavarian, Bohemian, Austrian. Uh, you had uh, Marie R Wagenger and um, Maximilian de Moscow were from Hof Hofenfort, Hohenfort, uh, or Vienna, um, Bohemia. And then uh, there's Bavarians, and then there's Prussians. Uh, Mars Bacholt is in um, uh, North um, Westphalia. Let's see, North Westphalia. They're in North Rhine Westphalia. And so they're in the state North Rhine Westphalia, which is actually right next to South Cotton, where the five Franciscan nuns who drowned on the Deutschland were from, next to the Rhine River. Right, very uh, clear, uh, close to Munster, Germany. So if you know where Munster, Germany is, uh, if you know where the Battle of the Tudorberg Forest was in 9 AD, that's when the German barbarians stopped the fucking Romans. Romans tried to conquer the German barbarians, and they couldn't do it. Why? Because of my ancestors. I like to think, at least. Otmar's Bacholt, very close to where the Tudorberg Forest is. The Battle of the Tudorberg Forest is when the German barbarians crushed the Romans, the Romans think they're so high and mighty, they think they're better than everybody, they want to be an empire, they overextended themselves, they, in fact, when they conquer new lands, they would actually try to make the new land citizens, so they do empire a little bit different than America, they try to incorporate the conquered lands into American states, we don't do that, we just conquer the lands and then we say, fuck all y'all, and then, you know, ISIS comes by and then Iraq is gone, so, what's my point? My point is this, I also got 11% African blood, which is a mystery to me. So, I have a whole bunch of, you know, uh, German blood, but Germany didn't exist. So, that means we've actually never lived in Germany. My ancestors were never in Germany. There was never such thing as a Germany. We got the fuck out before Germany was even invented. Uh, then they came to Kentucky. So, we've actually been Kentuckians way longer than we've been Germans. Now, we've been Germanic, we've been tribes, we were in that area where Germany is. The Battle of the Tudorberg Forest was very close to Munster, the Otmars Bacholt, where we originated. And then there was the Holy Roman Empire of German nations. So there was a German, like, feel to it. There's a German um, flavor to the Holy Roman Empire, which is the First Reich. It was like 800 years and, uh, but it wasn't totally just Germans. There was also Italians and I think I want to say Spanish too. So cultural regeneration. Cultural regeneration, what does that mean? Well, that means a lot of things. Germans are the ones that brought Christmas over. These white motherfuckers didn't like Christmas. In fact, that they saw you celebrating Christmas, they'd throw your ass in jail. The white motherfuckers that were here, they didn't like uh, alcohol. We were drinking alcohol in the church. When I was five years old, I was fucking getting sloshed. I was getting so drunk on Jesus' blood. I was just, you know, uh, getting all tipsy. And, um, and then there's picnics, and then they spoke German language, so they weren't speaking English, white, Anglo-Saxon, Protestants. And then there were immigrants. That's the fucking deal. There were immigrants. They talked a little bit different. They did things a little bit differently in the white, Anglo-Saxon, Protestants. Those fucking insecure, fucking cowardly pieces of shit wanted to blame the immigrants on their fucking shitty lives. Well, my life is shitty. Why are their lives not shitty? Well, maybe you shouldn't be dumb and backwards and stupid, you know, and racist and killing Native Americans and thinking your shit don't fucking stink. 
you lean a little bit closer, it turns out roses really smell like poo, poo, poo. So the culture regeneration is what do we do with our traditions? What do we do with who we are now? And so what do we do? I mean, I am not religious. I do, you know, Christmas did come with us, but the white motherfuckers in America didn't like Christmas. You were fined five shillings. The Puritans hated fucking Christmas. And um, so we brought that over. We brought hot dogs. We brought hamburgers. Albert Einstein, Karl Marx, the first socialist party was Germans. So we brought socialism. You're welcome, America. Socialism. Bernie Sanders? Okay, Bernie Sanders, that's nice that you did your little run or whatever, but that was introduced because of the Germans. First socialist party was the Germans. The Haymarket riots, Germans. The uh, agitators, the Pullman strikes, all the, you know, the rabble-rousers, Johann Most, which was a friend to Emma Goldman. You had that uh, Francis Pastoris, uh, one of the first settlers that outlawed slavery when they first came here, John Peter Zinger, the libel case with the freedom of the press. That was a German-American. There's, um, you know, science and uh, engineering and uh, just a whole bunch of shit, man, a whole bunch of shit we brought here. So, you know, you're fucking welcome, America. We, uh, you know, cheeseburgers, you like your fucking cheeseburgers? You like sausage? Uh, you like going to kindergarten? That's a garden of children. Germans. You're welcome, America. So, cultural regeneration, what does it mean? It means something to me. I feel like I was robbed of something. It feels like being white means you have to just, what, blend in and conform? Well, even a dead fish can go along with the stream. The promise of America is that we're going to be individuals. The promise of America was that we weren't going to fall for this fascist bullshit like fucking Trump is, you know, putting right out there, and Hillary's been her whole goddamn life. Jill Stein, a Green New Deal. Why the fuck would you not want a Green New Deal? Why would you not want a Green New Deal? Because you dumb and backwards, and you love your massa, and you love your goddamn change, you dumb backwards motherfuckers. And then being white, none of you guys are white. You all look like peach and maybe a little, um, I don't know, yellow, a little pink. None of y'all are white and none of y'all are black. So the racist is uh, social construction. Y'all made that shit up. So, you know, go back to kindergarten, the garden of children for, you know, from Germany and learn your fucking colors. Oh, my God. And, um... And so, yeah, so what does it mean? I could reject all of it and just create something new. I think there's something beautiful to that. You know, instead of they say that no German-Americans, no hyphenated Americans, no Italian-Americans, no German-Americans, no, no English-Americans, no Anglo-Saxons. Okay, that'd be good, you waspy motherfuckers. If you all said that you're not Anglo-Saxon again, I'd be down with that. But y'all do say that you're Anglo-Saxon. You're Protestant. Ooh, go Protestants. Uh, guess who brought Protestants? Made it popular. Martin Luther? German. Uh, German Bible, written in German, and then you had the, uh, uh, it's Prussia, Prussia is the one that fucking spread Protestant all over the place, made Protestantism fucking huge, Otto van Bismarck declared war against the Catholics, and that's the reason why probably the group servers got the hell out, because they're like, oh my god, you're not allowed to be a Catholic no more, that's the devil, them Protestants are the devil. And so they got the hell out of there. So for religious freedom, the opportunity to not be a slave, to not be conscripted into the military, uh, to, to, you know, it's brand new. So what can we do with this? Well, we're going to do something with this. We, you know, there's freedom here. There's democracy here. Well, we intend to be free. We intend to be a part of this government of, by, and for the people. So cultural regeneration is, uh, is taking a little bit of that take a little bit of this. That's why I like America being the melting pot, because we can look at the entire world and take the best ideas of the entire fucking world. You know, Germany has got the best economy right now in Europe. You have Norway, who, like, kicks ass in democracy and education. They're doing fucking really good. There's a lot of really good ideas in all the world. So let's take the best ideas that even Mexico has free college. Mexico can provide free college, and we're keeping them out. Yeah, well, maybe we should quit buying all their damn drugs. Uh, we got an insatiable appetite, so we're actually fueling the uh, the cartels and all the violence there, the El Chapos. That's because we can't, we love that cocaine. We can't get enough of that cocaine in general. I don't, I did cocaine maybe 10 years ago or something, but I don't give a fuck about cocaine. Marijuana was my thing, and so I think I need to get that out to Oregon. And poor Johan and Catherine, don't like where you're at? 
get the fuck up and move, you know, sell everything, take your whole family, get your wife, and get on down to Beverly Hills, that is, Black Tea, Texas Gold. <sighs> so this is going to be about Grimm's Fairy Tales to get the picture of where we came from. It was a grim picture. Hands on Gretel. The mother takes him out the woods because of famine, because they were starving. They hadn't, they didn't have enough to eat. So that's what happens. But there's also some good lessons, life lessons. Uh, the Little Red Riding Hood. If you're a pretty uh, girl and you wear a bright red hood and everybody can see you, well, there might be some weird fucking wolves, wolves out there, men who might want to eat you rape you, and kill you, so watch out for that shit, the, I mean, these are actually good lessons, they scare the shit out of you, so the way Disney did it, Snow White, that put Disney on the map, Walt Disney should be kissing Germans' asses, he should be kissing my German ass, my German, my Bavarian, Bohemian, Austrian, um, Prussian, African ass. Because Snow White put Walt Disney on the map. And where did Snow White come from? Grimm's Fairy Tales, written 1814. 1812, I think, was the first one, and then the second edition that was popular was 